Thank you for choosing the patented Pole Enforcer Ground Line Reinforcement System from Laminated Wood Systems. This DVD will explain in detail the safe and proper use of the Pole Enforcer tools and recommended installation methods. Make sure you have selected the correct Pole Enforcer steel units and orientation for each installation prior to starting. This information can be found in the Pole Enforcer Selection Guide. It is required that you read and follow all safety warnings printed in the Pole Enforcer Installation Manual prior to installation and also follow all established safe work practices of the utility or contractor. Position the pole enforcer steel on the ground as shown, oriented in the same direction of the line, flange side up, with the coped end of the steel against the pole. Using two personnel, raise the steel unit into driving position snug against the pole, making sure that little or no gap can be seen on either side of the steel. Once the steel has been positioned for driving, secure it with a nylon ratchet strap. The strap needs to be snug but not tight. It should be loosened shortly after the driving begins as leaving the strap snug will inhibit the driving process. Position the pull-down winch assembly against the pole on the opposite side of the steel. Adjust the chain binder to its maximum adjustment point. Position the slide roller on the flat face of the steel Secure the chain in the binder and pin in place. Tighten chain snug against the pole. Let out approximately 6 to 10 feet of winch line from the pull-down winch. Attach the bridle roller to the winch line. Assemble the base, center, and top sections of the winch pole assembly as shown and secure with attached pins. Open block to accommodate winch line. Thread winch line through block, close and secure with keeper bolt. Raise the winch pole assembly into proper position above the steel unit with the base positioned six to eight feet away from the pole. Attach winch line to hammer assembly and raise hammer assembly approximately 3 feet. Connect air supply hose to the inline safety valve, making sure the valve is in the off position. Attach bridle roller to the hammer chain bridle's free floating sling links. Lock winch pole winch in the raise position. Raise the air hammer to the top of the steel using the winch pole. Lock the pull down winch assembly to the tension position and retract winch line to snug. This will secure the hammer assembly in place at the top of the steel unit. The winch pole operator can now disengage the winch pole winch to the free wheel position. Measure from ground and mark the driving depth on the steel. Using the inline safety valve, activate the air hammer to begin driving the steel. The winch pole operator should gradually let out rope as the pull-down winch operator keeps tension on the pull-down rope, thus pulling the hammer down. Stop when desired driving depth is reached by turning off the inline valve. If installing two pole enforcer units on a pole, reverse the equipment on the pole and install the second unit using the same procedures. Place the roller plate on top of the first steel unit to allow the bridle roller to pass over when driving the second unit. After the driving process is complete, make sure the winch pole operator has control of the hammer before tension from the pull down winch is released.
Install the cable sling and the snatch block on the pole at least six feet above where the top of the steel will be placed. Run the capstan hoist rope through the block and return it to the ground and secure the end. It is required that you read and follow all safety instructions printed in the capstan hoist operator's manual prior to operation and also follow all established safe work practices of the utility or contractor. After placing 10 25-pound wafer weights on top of the driving shank, orient the driving shank on the ground as shown, gained side down next to the pole in the direction of the line. Attach a shackle to the driving shank, securing it with a bolt, nut, and cotter key. Attach the hoisting rope to the shackle and attach a tag line to the weight handle. Position the pole enforcer steel unit over the driving shank, lining up the access hole with the threaded hole on the shank. Secure with eye bolt as shown. Using pole mounted or truck mounted capstan hoist, raise shank and steel unit into position. Temporarily secure steel and shank to the pole using a nylon ratchet strap. Remove the eye bolt to free the pole enforcer from the driving shank. If using a pole mounted capstan hoist, reposition the chain on the outside of the steel. Measure up from the ground and mark the driving depth. Drive the pole enforcer steel unit by repeatedly dropping the driving shank onto the top of the steel. Be sure not to raise the driving shank past the red end to avoid pulling it out of the top of the steel. If a double installation is required, reverse the equipment and install the second piece following the same procedures. To lower, have a coworker pull the system away from the top of the pole enforcer using the tag line while lowering with the capstan hoist. Position the nylon ratchet strap approximately 12 inches from the top of the steel and tighten, drawing the steel as tight as possible against the pole. Connect the filter regulator to the air compressor as shown. Connect the air tool hose and activate the air tensioner tool while adjusting the regulator gauge to 90 PSI. Attach the remaining air tool hose to the filter regulator. Measure the circumference of the pole and steel unit. Cut four pieces of banding 18 inches longer than the measured circumference. Using the band curling tool, open the tool and place the banding in as shown. Raise handle and begin to close the tool. Repeat for all four pieces of banding. Slide a seal onto a piece of banding. Be careful to make sure the seal is oriented as shown with the open side toward the curl. Wrap banding around the pole and steel. Slide the uncurled end through the seal as shown. Position the banding two inches to four inches from the top of the steel. Tension the banding using either an air or manual tensioner. Manual tool instructions are included in the manual tool section of this DVD. Hit the banding with a hammer on the steel face to help tensioning. Apply four crimps to the seal using either an air or manual crimper. With the air tensioner still engaged, remove excess banding by bending the tensioner back and forth until the band breaks. Install the lower bands at 12 inches and 16 inches above the ground line. Locate the nails attached to the back of the safety cap. Position the safety cap centered on the pole. Drive the center nail first, then the left and right hand nails. 
Apply cold galvanizing paint to all seals and cut edges of the banding. To manually tension the banding, position the nose of the tensioner against the seal with the band in ratchet slot as shown. Draw the band tight by ratcheting until it is as tight as possible. To apply crimps to the seal manually, place the manual crimping tool over the seal as shown. Hold the crimper with one hand and push the other handle, bearing down against the pole. Repeat until four crimps have been put in each seal. Crimp the seal. With the band still in the nose of the tensioner, bend back and forth until excess breaks off. The coiled band scrap can then be easily removed from the ratchet slot. If you have any other questions not covered in this installation video, please call Laminated Wood Systems at 1-800-949-3526. Thanks for choosing the Pole Enforcer Ground Line Reinforcement System.